Ready to kick off the second half of the show. Al DeMarco here along with Steve Budin. Two more games to run down. Saints-Falcons coming up first and then the best for last. The NFC East showdown between the Eagles and Giants. First of all, New Orleans and Atlanta. I think the Saints certainly got a wake-up call last week. 33-30, needing that miraculous overtime win against Washington. But really, listen, anybody that looked at that game on the surface, you knew the Saints were in the prime letdown situation. And anybody that doesn't think that NFL teams don't suffer letdowns and look-aheads, well, you just haven't been betting football long enough because after that big Monday night game against the Patriots, I don't care who they were playing last week, they were going to have a letdown. And if you're going to go undefeated in this league, you're going to need to get lucky one or two games along the way. And that definitely, they used all their lucky <laughs> rabbit's foot or whatever. Meanwhile, the Falcons were playing without uh, Matt Ryan, without Michael Turner, without two starting offensive linemen. And it showed because Chris Redman got crushed by the Eagles' pass rush. They were never in the game. Philadelphia rolled over them at the Georgia Dome 34-7. Now, you may recall that first meeting between these two on Monday night. It was a game that the Saints should have covered, but then I think it was Mike Bell. He fumbled with field a, goal. Right, fumbled late in the game. Last minute field goal gave the uh, Falcons the backdoor back cover, cover in yep. that game. Now, uh, this one, naturally, you've got some injury situations to account for for Atlanta, a big spread. I guess the key here is do you go with the Saints here laying this big number? Do they rebound? Yeah, here's the problem. Even if Atlanta shows up with everybody strong, I don't think they can beat the Saints team if the Saints show up. The Falcons' defense, they can't be expected to slow down, let alone stop Drew Brees and the Saints, who are averaging nearly 37 points per game and already survived their big scare and flat spot against the Redskins last week. Look, you know me. I don't like to lay double digits. But if there ever was a spot to do it, this might just be one to consider. But more intriguing to me is this 50-point total. I think it's way too many points for a banged-up Falcon team and a Saints squad that's bound to get bored halfway through this one. Guys, remember, Atlanta's only scored a total of 27 points in its last two games combined. So I'm going to pass on the game here, and I'm going to go under this posted total. I can see the under in this particular game, but I'll be honest with you, I, I do like laying the points so a little more than the total. That's not to say I'm going to play either one of them. It's just an opinion of free pick here. I mean, listen, Matt Ryan is doubtful. Turner may or may not play, but the bottom line is your money is most likely going to be on Chris Redmond, which means my money is not going to be on Chris Redmond today. Uh, listen, last week against Washington, New Orleans was, was out uh, four defensive starters, and it showed. Saints are also playing their fourth road game in five weeks. They're 2-14 and 14 against the spread the last 16 division games where they've been laying seven points or more. But then on the flip side. They're you know, the, so damn good that none of that matters. Right, and the Falcons are 4-9 against the spread their last 13 as a home dog. I guess the key question here is, did the Saints bounce back from the letdown, or do they get trapped looking ahead to next Saturday's game at home? against the Dallas Cowboys, and that's really the only team, that's the only team left on their schedule that's the obstacle, as far as I see, between them and going undefeated. So, a slight lean toward the Saints, but certainly, again, not a game that I would be putting my own money on, but hey, they picked the games, I'm giving you my opinion. What Absolutely. can I tell you? Now, uh, this is not a game that you or I are going to be watching today at the Golden Nugget. This next game, the Eagles and Giants, we will be watching this one on TV today at the Sportsbook at the Golden Nugget. And uh, guys, listen, you guys have a great opportunity to be spending a weekend with us at a high roller suite being treated like a VIP at the Golden Nugget in conjunction with a great contest and giveaway that we are running with the Golden Nugget in Las Vegas. Right, so all you got to do is go to our website and right in the top corner you enter the contest and every 30 days we'll pick one lucky winner. They're going to come out to Vegas. We're going to treat them to a free suite, high roller suite, tickets to the Gordy Brown Show, airport transfer back and forth from the airport to the hotel, VIP check-in, no waiting in lines. They'll be out there at the pool playing blackjack with us, splitting ace with all the pretty waitresses and all the pretty dealers. They wear those bikinis out there, boy. They really I, get me going. I, I know that's why you like I yeah. knew it was something more than just the sports book. Now, I can also tell you the sports book's great, too. Steve occasionally sees that along with the pretty waitresses Absolutely. and the bikinis. He, he does work his way over to the sports book occasionally and watch some of the games. But uh, the greatest thing about the Golden Nugget is the intimacy, I think. And it's, it's really like a throwback to what Vegas once was. It's none of the phone 
cleanliness. It's none of the plastic. It's not what you find on the strip. It's really what vintage. Vegas wants. Vintage. That's a great word. Yeah, about you know, it. but don't be, you know, don't get misguided because at the same time that it's vintage, it's got all the luxury and amenities. They got a brand new Rush Tower. They just opened up. It's just like a strip tower. Anything you want, everything goes just like a strip hotel, but without the volcanoes and the pirate shows. You know what I mean? And all the silly extras that go on that make you feel like you're on some type of Fred Flintstone set. Yes, and here's the best part about the contest, guys. No purchase necessary. So as Steve said, look at the top of the website. You'll see the contest. Simply enter your email address and your information. One lucky winner chosen every 30 days, and you could be hanging out with us poolside with Steve, especially at the Golden Nugget here in Las Vegas. That's where we are every single Sunday and Monday. And tonight, we, of course, are going to be looking at the Giants-Eagles game. The Eagles in the first meeting. Well, actually, let's talk about what the Eagles did last week. We just mentioned it. They took on the Falcons in Atlanta. They rolled 34-7 over an injury riddled Falcons team. Uh, previous to those two games, or that game, uh, the Eagles beat up the Redskins by three at home in the final minute, escaping with a field goal. Then they needed a fourth quarter rally two weeks earlier to beat the Chicago Bears in Chicago, 24 to 20. Meanwhile, the Giants snapped a one and five straight up an ATS slide with a 31-24 upset of the Cowboys last week at home. A game which they were down 10 nothing early, but that Marion Barber fumble at the end of the first half really changed the whole complexion of that game. Key key NFC showdown. Virtual pick them affair. You have both of these uh, teams, the yo-yo syndrome, up and down all year, mostly due to injuries. The Giants come in here, a very small favorite at home, which means that, at the very least, the Vegas odds makers think Philly is the better team. Now, obviously, they were the better team the last time they met when they completely destroyed Big Blue, 40-17, to in Philly, in Week 8. But with the Giants' defense now fully intact, and with Westbrook still a no-go for the Eagles, I think the G-Men get this win at home, and I think they cover this virtual pick -em easily. Well, I got to tell you, you know, as a free pick, I was on the wrong side of these two, so I'm due, right? I mean, this time, I'm going with the Eagles because, you know, I looked at that last game. It was 30-7 to at halftime. They won, as you said, 40-17. to That's the third consecutive win straight up and against the spread in the series for the Eagles if you include the playoff win last year for them as well in this series. And I look at the Giants. They've covered against one, one winning team this year. Dallas Cowboys, right? Exactly. At Dallas in week number two and last week. Maybe they just have Tony Romo's number. Meanwhile, the Eagles are 5-1 and one straight up, 6-0 and oh against the spread in regular season division as a regular season division road dog in the final four weeks of the season under Andy Reid when they're taking on a team that's coming off a win. So that tells me that this is a team that peaks at the end of the season, a team that rises to the occasion when it takes on a winning team. Meanwhile, I look at this New York squad the pass rush, not as fearsome as it used to be. The secondary has been beat up all year long. I mean, look at what Tony Romo did to the secondary last week. Career-high 392 yards and three touchdowns. Jason Witten, their tight end, career-high 14 catches, 156 yards. Um, they really just had a field day. I think they threw the ball 55 times last week against it. Eagles get Deshaun Jackson back last week. He had a big 78-yard touchdown against them in the first meeting. I think unlike the Cowboys, the Eagles will get a pass rush on Eli Manning. And one game, one good game by the Giants, which basically the Cowboys turned it over to them literally and figuratively, 100%. I don't think that necessarily means Big Blue is back. So I'm going to go against you on this. Now you're scaring me because you're usually really good with the Eagles. So I don't know if I'm going to switch out here, but I think I'll stay with Big Blue. Now I'm going to go the other way. So in today's show, Indian Denver, we split. I like Denver, buying up the half point to seven and a half. You're going the other way, buying the insurance down, taking the Colts at home, minus six and a half. Baltimore, we're both on the Ravens in this one, laying the big double digits against the Lions. Uh, in terms of the New Orleans game against Atlanta, you like the uh, game in that one to stay under the total. I'm going to go with the Saints, and we split with the Eagles and Giants. That'll do it for today's show. Remember, guys, you can get all of your scores, odds, injuries, weather reports, more free picks, everything you need to be a winner today from us online and make sure you catch tomorrow's show as Steve and I break down the Monday night game between Arizona and San Fran.